Hi there, prayer team. So for this month's um, prayer team video, training, <laughs> teaching, coaching video, mentoring video, um, we're going to look at a couple of scriptures. It's going to be short but power-packed, okay, what God has um, to say today. So let's pray real quick, and then we're going to look at a couple scriptures in Luke, so grab your Bible. So, Lord, I just thank you so much for the opportunity to get in your word together, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are so alive on the inside of us and that you break open your word and illuminate it for us and give us revelation and show us, Lord, you teach us and train us, Lord, in um, in your word and, and how to walk with you and how to trust you better. And you are also um, teaching and training us how to pray and intercede for people. Lord, um, you always have um, wisdom for us that we need for right now. In, and it's found in your word, Lord. So thank you. Thank you for the um, strong foundation of your word, the strong anchor of your word, Lord, that we can stand on. Um, it's just rock solid, and, and we're just so grateful and thankful that you have given us your word, Lord. And um, today, we pray, Lord, that you would give us revelation from the couple of scriptures that we're going to read together and um, show us what to do with them, Lord, to put them into practice. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, you guys, so... Luke 11, verse 5 through 13 is the first one. I was talking with a friend about this this morning, and um, it just is a right now word uh, that God wants to do. He is really uh, emphasizing prayer, and Dan is going through the, um, the Lord's Prayer, and we're talking about prayer in the series that he's preaching right now. Um, let's talk to God, right? It just, prayer is very simple. It's simply talking to God. It is simply having a conversation with God and conversation and talking with God is just like talking with a person. It's a two-way conversation that, um, we'd probably should do more listening even than talking. So, um, like, let's just listen to what God has to say as we pray, um, and as we get in his word. Okay, so Luke 11, 5 through 13, I'm going to read it real quick, and then we'll talk about, and then I have another scripture, and we'll talk about what these mean, okay? Um, then teaching them more about prayer, teaching the disciples more about prayer. This is right after he, the Lord's Prayer, okay? So Dan's going through the Lord's Prayer, got, Jesus is teaching us how to pray, and the things that should be included in our prayers, um, and then teaching us more about prayer, Jesus used this story. He's going to tell a, a parable. Suppose you went to a friend's house at midnight. So you're going to a friend's house wanting to borrow three loaves of bread. You want to borrow three, three loaves of bread. You say to your friend, a friend of mine has just arrived for a visit and I have nothing for him to eat. So you're going to your neighbor's house to ask for three loaves of bread because your friend has come to you and is weary from his long journey and it's midnight and he's tired and he's hungry and you want to feed him, but you don't have anything yourself. You don't have what he needs. So you go to the house of the person who has what he needs and you say, I'm asking for this for my friend who's visiting me, okay? That's um, important to remember. You're, you're going to ask for something you don't have. You're going to ask for, your, uh, for it for, on behalf of your friend, on behalf of your friend. And suppose he calls out, your neighbor calls out from his bedroom, don't bother me, the door is locked for the night and my family and I are all in bed. I can't help you. But I tell you this, even though he won't do it for friendship's sake, if you keep knocking long enough, persistence, he will get up and give you whatever you need because of your shameless persistence. And so I keep, I tell you, keep on asking and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on knocking and you will find. Keep on, oh, keep on seeking and you will find. Keep on knocking and the door will be open to you. 
for everyone who asks receives, everyone who seeks finds, and to everyone who knocks the door will be open. So this is, there's so much in here, you guys. Um, but just to know, like, if you can sit, continue to persist in prayer on behalf of a friend who has a need, you cannot fill their need, but you know God can fill their need. So you are coming and knocking on God's door and saying, Lord, I'm not giving up until I see my friend receives what he needs. My friend who is weary and tired and hungry from a long journey, I am praying for him to have what he needs. And I'm asking you to supply my friend's need. So on behalf of your friend, you are going to God and persistently praying. And he says, everyone who asks receives, everyone who seeks finds, and everyone who knocks the door will be open. Meaning, I hear you and I will answer you. Don't give up praying. Keep praying for that friend who has a need. Now let's look at Luke 7, 1 through 8. So go back a couple pages. And here's something really similar. Okay. When Jesus had finished saying all of this to the people, he returned to Capernaum. At that time, the highly valued slave of a Roman officer was sick and near death. So this Roman officer has a slave or a servant who is like a son to him. He is highly valued to this Roman officer. He is like, I don't want him to be sick. I want him to be healed. He is precious to me. Uh, when the officer heard about Jesus, he sent some respected Jewish elders to ask him to come and heal his slave. So he sent some friends to go and talk to Jesus. And they said, they begged Jesus to help the man. If anyone deserves your help, he does, they said, for he loves the Jewish people. He even built a synagogue for us. They're talking to Jesus about how great this man is and like he needs your help. His slave needs your help. He really wants his slave to be healed. Like, please do this for him. Like he deserves it. He deserves your help. Um, and that was kind of the Jewish way of thinking, right? The religious way of thinking is like someone who deserves it. They deserve your, he deserves your help. He's a good man. He's good to us. He's kind to us. He's generous to us. So Jesus went with them. And just before they arrived at the, the house for him to heal the slave, the officer sent some other friends out to meet Jesus in the road. And they, uh, he, he had them say, Lord, don't trouble yourself by coming to my home for I am not worthy of such an honor. Like see the difference, the Jewish, uh, the Jewish friends that he sent, they said, he's worthy of this. He deserves it. And he sent another friend to say, I'm not worthy of it. I don't deserve you to even come under my roof. Like you're so much greater than me is what he was saying. Um, I'm not even worthy to come and meet you myself. That's why he sent friends. Um, but he said, just say the word from where you are. And I know my servant will be healed. I know my servant will be healed. Now there's lots of meaning in this. The next couple verses talk about how this man understood authority. He, he could tell that Jesus had great authority. And if a man has great authority, it must be that he was given that authority by someone even greater in authority. That's what the Roman officer understood. But here's the thing that is happening here is the Roman officer is sending friends to Jesus on his servant's behalf. So this is the same thing as the one we just read where a friend is going to someone else on behalf of his friend who has the need, right? So the servant has a need, the Roman officer has a need, he wants his servant to be healed, but he sends someone else on his behalf to go to Jesus and ask him to do this. And uh, jumping down to verse 10, when the officer's friends returned to the house, they found the slave completely healed. So Jesus was like in awe and amazed at this man's faith that he knew all Jesus had to do was say the word. He knew that there was someone, the father, who is in even greater authority over Jesus that had given him all of this healing power and healing authority. 
And he said, I, I just know that if you just say the word, my servant will be healed. But, but notice that he sent friends to talk to Jesus and ask for the healing. This is intercession. This is a picture of intercession. Right now in the body of Christ, intercession is so important. I know I'm talking to people who love to pray and people who love to intercede. So please know that what God is about to do in the church and in our church is we are going to see people healed and set free by praying for them and believing for them without them even being there. You do not have, and I've talked to you about this before, you do not have to lay hands on someone in, in order for them to be healed and to pray for them and pray over them. There's no time or distance in the spirit. And so I just believe that God is saying now is the time where we are the friends going to God on someone else's behalf to say, my friend needs something that I can't do for them. I really desperately need you to heal them, Jesus. Um, but just say the word, just say the word. And I know they're going to be healed right where they're at. You just say the word from where, where we're at, Lord. So um, you and I as intercessors, this is a season. Don't stop praying. Continue to pray. Keep on asking, seeking, knocking. God is promising that he will answer. He is promising that on behalf of our friends that we're praying for, our family members that we're praying for, they are going to come into the kingdom. They are going to get saved. They are going to get healed. They are going to get set free. They're going to get delivered. This is a promise from God. And they, they could be far away. They could be bedridden because they can't get to church and they can't get to church. But they are going to be healed by us interceding and praying for them. Very important. There's a high, high value God is placing always on prayer. But especially now in this season on intercession, it could be, you know, we've been praying for uh, believers across the world in different countries that are experiencing war right now, some experiencing famine right now, um, attacks of different kinds. And so we are praying and interceding for these ones and God is moving on their behalf without us having to be there. But we are going to see the answers to our prayers um, people that we are praying for that are even far away. So, uh, you guys let me know what you think of that. But those two passages, if you want to pray or if you want to, um, read them yourself, Luke 11 verse five through 13, and then Luke seven verse one through 10. Okay. Uh, very important intercession right now. So your positions as prayer warriors, as part of the prayer team at our church is um is really being uh placed in a higher uh higher priority by God. He is placing you in that position as his as an intercessor. Um and I think I mentioned this to you a couple of months ago too that had a, a dream recently where people were being set free and delivered of demonic spirits even without anybody laying hands on them. So we can intercede for people that we know are bound and we have that authority and Jesus will go and do it for us. Like he, all he has to do is say the word and it will be done. So um, I just believe we're going to see a lot of miracles in this coming season as we pray and intercede and we don't give up. Okay, love you guys.